Hello, everybody. How's it going? Hi. Welcome to Little Spa in Los Angeles, day number two. I have the pleasure of uh, having a couple speakers here, um, Jared and Elena, Elena Mitchell. Um, they're to my left right here. They're actually um, owners of skincarebyelena.com, elenamitchell.com, and beefysites.com. Um, they're a, a powerhouse couple. Um, Basically, Jared actually has uh, a lot of e-commerce experience. He's, a, he's the lead e-commerce manager for Neil Patel. Um, and Elena also has appeared on nationally syndicated um, shows such as Yahoo Finance, CBS, KTLA. So um, please, I have the pleasure of um, having these two people uh, speak in front of you today. So please give me a great round of applause for these two people right now and uh, welcome them on stage. Test, test, test. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Thank you, you Eugene. That was good. All right. Um, switch me sides. Switch sides. Right. Who wants more clients? Yes. We figured all of you would, so we're super excited to be here today to talk to you guys on how to do this. We're going to give you a lot of information. Please, if you want to get out notes, if you want to get out your phone and do this while we're talking to you, do it. You won't hurt our feelings. We want you to do this. So do what you need to do. And Eugene notified me that this actual presentation will be made available on the app, which is awesome, by the way. We so both are app. on the app, and it's great. And I just texted you on the app. It's, it's really addicting. And really well done. <laughs> yes. So, we're um, excited to keep using that. The title? of this is five things you can do online right now to get more clients through your door. And that is literal. Um, if you pull out your cell phone and you are online and have a connection, you are going to have some things you can do on your cell phone while we talk to potentially get more client calls right away. So it's kind of fun. Should we? A little bit about <laughs> us. We've been happily married for 15 years. We have two children, two boys. Both of us went to the same college, business marketing degrees. We didn't meet in our marketing classes, surprising. We met in the cafeteria, so <laughs> we both like food. <laughs> we are responsible. Too much. Yeah, too much. <laughs> $25 million in physical product sales online, and we are experienced on the brand side, which is Elena Mitchell, my own product line, the retail side, skincarebyelena.com, that's our legacy site, and the agency side. So we have some experience coming from this information. Yeah, I think that's one thing that makes us a little unique. We've seen a lot of speakers talk, and usually they're just talking from one side of the equation. For us, it's been extremely valuable when we're interacting with beauty professionals and estheticians just to be able to speak from three different sides of the equation, both agency consulting, both brand, and both retail day spa sides. So yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, oh, before you do any of these tips, and we're actually going to kind of give you six, um, what we would say is if your house is not in order, it's probably not going to be a good investment of your time to do what we're going to teach you today because you're going to get people through the door and they're not going to want to come back. And that's I'm not going to leave you that good review that we want <laughs> you to get because you haven't gotten these things put together in house. So. So if you you're starting that. and just getting going, let's make sure that you have things dialed in before you really start the internet marketing. Because some of the people, some of the feedback we were getting from our last talk is they started getting clients like the next day. So it could heat up pretty fast. All right, so first, um, the most overlooked free source of clients. We're gonna spend a big chunk talking about Google and Google My Business. And then second, we're going to go into our five hacks. We're going to see if we have any time afterwards to answer questions. We're going to try to be brief, but there's a lot of content. Um, we, we will be here yes. after, and we're going to be walking around. If you want to talk to us, connect. We would love to connect with you guys. This is a big part of our passion desire, as well as Lisa's. We've connected. That's why we are here, is because we know what it's like to be in your place, and we want to help you guys. Yeah, we started in a 70-square-foot room. Yes, very small. <laughs> No, wedge those clients in there. Yeah. <laughs> we did it. Okay, so we want to talk about Google first. How many of you know what Google My Business is or have a Google My Business listing? Yay, good for you guys. All right, good for you. Um, Google owns 
Google My Business, obviously, YouTube, Chrome, Google Maps, Waze, and more. So check this out. They have an 85% market share on all search, and they have a 94% market share search. on all mobile search. So if we're thinking of free ways to get clients, Google provides them, and not only that, but it owns search. And these days, we're just seeing people do more and more mobile for service-based yes. businesses, right? 46% of all of those searches are local. local. So half those searches are local looking for your places of business. 75% of users never scroll beyond that first page. 75, okay? And here's another funny one. Um, we're hearing a lot of feedback right now and people wanting us to teach a course on like Facebook ads. Which Instagram. we know very well. Yeah, <laughs> they're great. And many of you probably have do them currently or have tried them in the past. And we actually think they're great too. But search still beats social media by more than 300% as a traffic source. So we love Google and Google My Business because it's free and because they pretty much own search. But the whole thing is you have to get on the first page, right? And we share these stats because we want you to understand why this is so important because it's not just yeah, go ahead and do this. It's fun and easy. So you know you are spending your energy at the best place right now. That's the most amount of potential customers is right there on Google. Ooh, and even if you're not, even if you're a, a brand owner and you're not even a day spa or something, um, what we're going to go through in this first section is going to be incredibly useful to you, I think, because it is the basic building block for setting up good search engine optimization for your website. So this can actually help you sell more products as well as services. So don't think, oh, they're only teaching me like this. You're learning this, but it can be applied to all of this. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, the other cool thing is, well, maybe you're bummed because you're like, ah, oh, shoot, I, I was hoping they'd talk about Yelp or like TripAdvisor <laughs> or something. Yes. Um, all those websites we've found really do copy Google. So in this first section, we're going to talk about Google. Take notes, um, what you learn is going to be directly transferable over to your Yelp listing or TripAdvisor or wherever you really have a presence to bring in new services and new leads. So the next, I guess, what do we call it, slide, is in your packet and it says target persona, okay? Something like this. So how, how many of you, Customer this is something I'm really curious about. How many of you have a target persona completely mapped out for your business? I don't okay. see any hands. One, two, oh, three. two, three, okay. About three, cool. four. Maybe you call it something different. This Customer. is like the building block for us, I'd say. Even if you don't do anything on Google, you should do this. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell them about it? The customer uh, avatar, target persona, your ideal customer. So we have taken this little bit of from data that we've obtained and from just looking at our customers. So you want to fill this out completely. You're going to create this customer avatar, this person. Maybe she's 20 and an acneic client, or maybe she is middle-aged, like our client, Karen. We gave her a name, Karen, sometimes we call her Kathy, uh, 56 years old. What are her struggles? What are her goals? She's a little overweight, would like to lose weight, wants you know, some anti-aging, has 2.5 kids. We even got so detailed when we were able to, on the Facebook, of her income. And we found out she has a higher income, our average customer, than we originally thought. So we update and go through this because everything you're going to do is going to be about this Karen, this Kathy, this customer avatar. So you really want to keep this profile handy uh, we have this template. Did you yeah, I have a blank email. template. This is like an old one that get we use, but I have like a nice new one. If anyone needs one. So you one, see all the info on there. So get detail. Please feel look. free to email yeah. us. You can email me at jared at beefysites.com and I'll just send you the template. So um, you get that filled out. Yes. And then we need to figure out how they're searching for your business. So always let's think mobile first, okay? Because I think when people are developing websites these days, they're like doing it on their desktop computer and most of the traffic is, is these days is mobile. So let's think of mobile first when we're thinking about avatar and how they're searching. Okay, so our avatar, we're calling her today, Kathy, is it? Kathy Karen. Great. We need to find the top 10 to 15 keywords that Kathy is going to be using to find your type of business, okay? Keywords, um, in case you're not familiar with that, that's just referring to the type of word 
that Kathy would be typing into Google to find a type of business. Maybe she's in your area, maybe she's on vacation, or maybe she's just in your area looking for a new place to get a facial or something like that. Okay? So um, we need to find the top 10 to 15 keywords, and I don't want you to overthink this. In general, it's probably just your city and the type of service you're doing. Like day spa. So for us, it was like Dana Point Spa for a long time, and then we realized that they were looking for hot tubs. So you may want to be careful because um, you need to be specific enough but broad enough to make sure you're covering the vast majority of search and that they're looking for the right business, okay? There's some free tools you can use to find keywords. We, we are going to show you one right now. Okay. And everyone overlooks this. It's so funny to me, but it's the next little page in your sheet here. Yeah, you can do it on your phone. You can do it on your computer. Mm -hmm. And it's best yeah, to do that. with an incognito search, but it works either way in case you don't know what that is. And basically, you're going to go into Google, and in the little toolbar at the top, you're going to start typing in some of those keywords that you think they're using. Like for and us, if you be, don't know, you could ask. Yeah, that's Don't true. be afraid to ask customers Very or friends true. or family, like, how would you search for my business? If you're really like, I don't know, just ask some people. They'll give you some ideas you didn't think of. So you'll see it starts auto-complete from the little picture. They start auto-filling in these keywords. Do you think those keywords are what are most commonly searched for, or do you think that they're least commonly searched for? If you think common, yeah. Yes. It's common, most common. That's this is like a free, common. quick way that no one uses that you can fill out your 10 to 15 keywords like almost instantaneously in case you need a little help. Mm -hmm. And we suggest you do it. I use it all the time. <laughs> and I think <laughs> lots I th of things. We, have, we have Kathy on the board in our office and we have our keywords, and there's too many keywords for because we got too many businesses. But we have them on the board at all times, and it just helps us keep in that mindset when we're making our decisions of how we want to continue to grow and scale our businesses. What does Kathy want? What does Kathy need? Yeah, cool. Um, okay, Google my business facts. Here's the sad thing when we started looking into it. 52% of Google my business listings are unclaimed. 85% of the businesses on Google My Business that are filled out are filled out incomplete. So here's where it gets sticky. If, yes. it's, if it's unclaimed, there's a potential, if you haven't claimed your Google My Business, that someone else has claimed it for you. Don't want that. And is updating your information for you, maybe even a competitor. So if you do nothing today, do this. Go <laughs> and claim your Google listing. Yeah. <laughs> It's very easy to claim or even set up a new Google listing. Take your phone out, go to your app store right now, and install the Google My Business app. That's one of the things that you can do while we're talking. It's just titled Google My Business, and you can't miss it. Two slides ahead, we show you where to go to claim or set up your Google My Business listing. Okay. And I also included a little slide in here that just shows you, here it is, what we're talking about, this is where Google My Business appears in search. So when someone's cruising around in their car, like in your area, looking for whatever service you're offering, waxing, and they're typing when they shouldn't be at a stoplight, like, you know, Dana Point waxing or something, that little box that comes up, a lot of people call it knowledge graph, some people just call it Google My Business. You guys have seen it before. This is what comes up, and this is where you want to be and we can help you figure out how to get to the number one listing because we know we need to be on the first page, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So once you claim and once you set it up, this is where people go wrong. Essentially, what you need to do is be a one-upper. <laughs> so what that basically means is when you set up your listing, you want to fill everything out your hours, your services, your location, your photos, your videos. Everything, don't leave anything blank. Every single thing you can. And back to the one upper comment, we all have that friend at the party that tells a story that's always a little better than the other <laughs> friend. Right? So you kind of want your listing to be better than your quote unquote competition, okay? So do a little research as to who is coming up high in that Google My Business area Check out their Google My Business, check out their photos, check out their offers, check out what they've done, and make sure you're at least as good, if not better. So if right? they have 10 reviews, shoot for 15, or even better, 20 reviews. 
reviews are huge. So I would write down how many reviews they have. Generally, in the beauty professional field, we're finding if it's a single location, it's generally around 10 to 20 reviews. So in general, we tell people to try to gather about 30, and that way you're not really having to worry about it. Um, yes. We don't have enough time to talk about gathering reviews today. Maybe we'll have some time towards the end, but yeah. we do talk about it in yeah. full detail in the product oh, wow. that will be available on Live Love Spa soon. It's gonna be in beta, so. Um, I included a sheet in here that shows how the inside of Google My Business looks, okay? So once you log in, if you've set it up before, this will look familiar, but you're gonna have all your options here out. on the left, and you're gonna have just kind of like a dashboard. And so basically you just wanna take one of your days where you've set some time aside for marketing and go back through there and update it and make sure the information is current, okay? And then, let's see, oh, so I wanted to give you some ninja tips before we go into the next five tips, what you can do for Google My Business to rank higher than everyone else, okay? So first of all, one of the number one mistakes that we see is the categories. And what do people do? They go way too specific. Mm -hmm. So so don't get, I'm trying to think of something very specific. Like, like waxing, uh, sugar. Well, sugar waxing would be a little specific. I would probably still go with waxing. Um, if you want to go with something like a, even a brand, you're probably still being too specific. If you're like, oh, imminence, facials or something, most yeah. likely that's not how they're going to find you and search for you. They're looking, you know, for if they're really looking for eminence, they're probably going to go to eminence's website and find you through their spa locator. So this you want to be a little more broader. Um, think that sense. Definitely. If you're um, a day spa type of location, I would just use day spa. Mm -hmm. If you're doing hair, just use hair, right? Keep it very generic and Google will show your Google My Business to more users. I don't even really think I do full service because I don't know if everyone, non-industry people yeah. know what that is. Yeah. Um, okay, and remember when we wrote out those 15, 10 to 15 keywords in that customer avatar? We're going to keep using that this whole, whole presentation. Use those keywords as you fill out Google My Business. It's the ninja tip. Yes, especially in the long original description area. I say original because it needs to be original. Google hates copy and yes. paste. So when we original, so you create it, you write it. Don't copy and paste from someone else's content that they've already written out. Um, if you want to have an example, that's fine, but change it and then do you want me to talk about the keywords in there? Definitely the add keywords okay. in there. Yeah. So keywords, I think of them as my robot voice as you're writing. So if you're writing in your content, content in the long descriptions and you're saying, you know, Dana Point, Day Spa. I'm going to use that as an example. So Dana Point, Day Spa is your keyword. Okay, so you say, here at Dana Point, Day Spa, I have an, we have an range of da -da 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 -da. Another keyword might be, um, give me a good keyword. Might facials. Be, yeah, facials. Yep. Uh, so we have an array of facials. So don't get super specific in there because you want to you have your keywords. Uh, so that's how you're going to fill that out. Original content and make sure those keywords are in there. The trick is, um, and the reason we use the robot example is because it's kind of hard to use the keywords and make it sound natural and flow. <laughs> so that is the challenge set before you. Yes. Awesome. Um, extra remember. ninja tips. Google My Business, most people don't even know these features exist, but I assume many of you do use a, some sort of booking software for your businesses. Most of them will integrate into Google My Business, okay? So you can literally integrate your booking software into GMB, and then you can add a booking button. So it's incredibly easy for people directly from their phone, if they're searching at that stoplight, to click on book me or whatever, and it'll send them right through your funnel so you can bring the customer in maybe the next hour or something like that. So definitely check that out. Questions and answers is another one. A lot of people don't even check the questions and answers field. Gosh, um, people are probably asking questions about your business, and the, the sad thing is anyone can answer them. So your competitors, just some random people on the internet that are writing. So you want to make sure you answer them. <laughs> yeah. Don't let your competitor answer them for you. 
you have the opportunity to put on coupons. And the next coolest thing that they just added on is the direct messaging feature. So if you put that app on your phone right now and you integrate it into your Google My Business, you can set up direct messaging so people, while they're in their car at that stoplight, when they shouldn't be, they can <laughs> message you. They shouldn't be, yes. Right away. And you can respond to them through your cell phone. Are you open on Saturdays? Yes, I am. And then the other Even thing though is, I put that on there, you can still ask me by direct messaging. <laughs> sure, because people don't always read. And they will, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, they just added a social posting feature. Um, so people can now use Google My Business like social media. And it's, it's so funny because no one ever talks about Google My Business, but that's where like everyone's finding <laughs> leads and clients and stuff right now. Um, and it's we encourage place. people to do the tripwire. Yes. The tripwire. Yeah, talking about our tripwire. So that's your first promotion that you're going to offer to a new customer to get them into your door and to begin engaging with you, or as the fun funnel marketing term, uh, later on as you market to them more and more. But so an example of that might be a free brow wax with a facial or first time $49 facial. Um, something that is a, I like to say, low risk. So they say, okay, yeah, I, I'll, I'll try you out for this. This is kind of a low risk if I hate it. It was $49 or whatever. Uh, so figure out what that might be. Uh, you can maybe see how you got some of your current customers. That's where I would start if they're all, you know, well, I came to you because you did have the first time client special. Well, great, then keep doing your first time client special, whatever that is. Or maybe ask them, would, would a better price have been? Like, what, have, what would have got you in here sooner? Or, you know, for your friend that you want to refer, why do you think that barrier is? Like, well, you know, she really, if it was, you know, 79 instead of 89, I think she would be in here. So I feel like I'm Ooh. really loud at the moment. Uh, so that's your tripwire. First time promo offer. Tripwire is not a fit for everyone, but it sure worked for us when we started out our spa. I think our clientele was full in the first year. Is that me? Am I doing something wrong? We're good? And then, um, so for us it worked really well. Um, the ones that we seemed to see work the best from our on -site, uh, uh, online research right now is the $49 first time facial, $9 brow wax, then upsell. But it's kind of hard to generalize those sort of statements, especially when a lot of the data is coming from the Midwest right, and right. Beverly Hills, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> um, well, different demographics. how are we doing so far? Awesome. Are keeping good? Good. Learning, yeah. taking notes, not going too fast, not slurring my speech. I didn't have anything to drink. <laughs> no, yeah. not yet. Not yet, she says. Um, okay, so we can't talk in detail about reviews, like we could probably talk in the whole hour about generating reviews and responding to reviews. Why don't you just tell them what the perfect review looks like? A perfect review and don't be afraid to state your need. We have a saying in our family uh, and our business is take care of business, state your need. No one's gonna know unless you say, this is what I need, this is what you say. I need a five star review, that would help me. I need it to be original content, at least three sentences. A photo, a picture, video, photo. would photo would photo. be ideal. That would be a perfect ideal review. Absolutely. And I would put that, you're not saying, do this for me and I got this, but you are stating, here's how I can help. This is how you can help me. And then they go, oh, cool, yeah, no problem, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, a great way to get started is to figure out how many reviews you're gonna need to index number one in Google My Business to, to appear at the top and to just start working on maybe one every couple days, right? Because you've all got a lot to do. So don't stress about it. Google actually likes it when it builds over time. Mm -hmm. Another scary thing is the reviews actually hold more weight if the person leaving the review has brought their cell phone into your place of business. Is this scary to anyone else? Yeah, they like walking and tracking you. It will hold more weight there. So hopefully they've been to see you before. <laughs> um, Eugene, how are we doing on time? Okay, we, uh, that was our first biggest hack because it covers the most amount of traffic for the littlest cost, which is basically just your time, which is valuable. Um, so next we're gonna talk about five local search hacks. Some of these you can do right now if your connection is quick enough. So here we go. And you know, we didn't mention this earlier, so that's good. Yes. When you are setting up your Google My Business, you are setting up what's called a citation, okay? And we included a list 
of 10 little sites here. Some of them are actually huge Someone's sites where you can set up a citation. When you set up your Google My Business, you are setting up a citation. This is in your Also topic. Yelp, Facebook, I forget everyone I have on there. There's about, Yellow pages, super pages, yes. There's about 75 that I recommend for day spas or beauty professionals. If you want to email me, I'll send you the rest of the list. I didn't want to list too many and overwhelm. Um, but what you need to basically do is first make sure your information on Google My Business is exactly how the United States Postal Service lists it, okay? So the address, phone number, business name, and website are the most important. I would probably make sure you have all this information on a Word document someplace we have That's the really template exact to yeah. copy and paste into all the different websites. All your citation needs to be the same. Yeah. Um, and I'd work on one a day. Don't overwhelm yourself again. Start with these 10 if you don't have them already. Get the information up to date and get it congruent across all the channels. Because Google loves these small businesses or local businesses that have multiple citations that are all saying the same thing. It will index you higher. So this is something you could actually go back to your room or your home tonight and set up. And, and most of them are free. Actually, all the ones yeah. I list are free. They'll try to charge you. Go with a free option. You don't yeah. need them. So. The first hack would be setting up these citations like right away. Um, Let me run over that. Cool. Oh, yeah, some of them require you to uh, text or phone com confirm as you set them up. So make sure you're setting a, uh, not doing it while you're doing a facial or something. <laughs> cool. The next is one of my favorites right now. Um, Facebook groups are a huge opportunity for, for professionals, but you need to go about it in a very careful fashion. And that's the slide that she's showing right now. We included yeah. one in Dana Point, because that's where we're located. So your local Facebook groups. How many of you are a part of a Facebook group? Okay. Great. They can be extremely depressing, <laughs> right? And they can be very helpful. Um, so this hack is basically what I want you to do, and I kind of showed you, Search for your city name in Facebook, and then click on, there it is, the little groups tab. I have the desktop here, not the mobile um, view, but you should be able to find it. And join, I say join them all, but she's always like, no, join like Don't two Don't say three. join all, Jared, you're gonna freak them out. <laughs> I say join like one or two, get your feet wet, and then you can kind of keep joining in. I've joined a few and I was a woman, you know, business Orange County group and I've dropped off a few because I'm like, oh, these aren't helpful. You know, find your group that is fruitful and, and beneficial for everybody. You'll find these groups that are in your county or your city. You'll join them, you'll get approved. It's gonna put your finger on the pulse of what's going on in your city, okay? Again, some of it is, can be kind of depressing and political, but there's a lot of good things there too. <laughs> and then Banter. what we showed you is you can search in the group for those keywords that we talked about earlier. We searched on this page that you have in front of you for facial in Dana Point. Up pulls a comment. Best place to get facials with microdermabrasion. Thank you, I just moved here. 63 She's looking for comments. for recommendation. So what do you do with that? Well, what I would do is I'd friend people that have commented because they're most likely potential clients. Make sure that your Facebook profile, you're not sitting you know, on a boat with a Mai Tai. Make sure it looks professional. <laughs> Okay, um, so I'd friend the people. I would probably post a comment as well that is not overly salesy and promotes yourself, but also promotes maybe a couple of your mm. competitors. Maybe you don't do sugar waxing. Someone's looking for sugar waxing. That specific offer to your friend down the street. Hey, she does a great job. He does a great job. Go see her. So, hey, I'd love to give you my $49 first time facial offer. Um, but also, in case you need sugar waxing, our friend Clover down the street offers it. Some of our competitors are some of our best friends, literally. So we love to refer business. And if they get the client, that's great. You know, like we're all helping each other out. So this is a great way to get in Billion front of people. Industry. <laughs> <laughs> now you can do the same thing. We're running low on time. You can do the same thing on Instagram just with hashtags and those keywords. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that but it's the same basic concept. If you can identify the hashtags in your area that are actually producing comments from legitimate customers, they are out there. 
I'd spend a little bit of time as long as your avatar is on Instagram, okay? You can get clients this exact same way Some, as well. Certain demographic is not on Instagram yet. So it's a good time to just get your feet wet and maybe figure it out. Some of them are, like millennials. All right, um, only two more. The first one is business name, and that's number four. Um, so you'll see I have two slides here for you. The first one lists a spa called Dana Point Spa. That's the main keyword in our area. Someone in our area was really smart about things because they were starting out, they have one review, and they decided to name their business the main keyword that people search for in the area to find that type of business. Yeah. I don't know if they'll call, be called Dana Point Spa forever, but they're ranking number one right now just because of their business name. So they're getting all of those calls and all of that interest as long as it's set up properly. So here's the thing. You can actually change your business name listing in Google My Business temporarily if you'd like to include the main keyword, then dash, then your business name. You can do that and you will go up to the number one position like within hours, okay? Google doesn't like it. So here's why I bring that up. You can do that if you want. I wouldn't make it a practice, but here's where the application is, is if you have a competitor that you can't seem to rank higher on when these keywords that you're competing for, um, and they've done this. You've seen they've altered their business name to include keywords. I included the next slide. There's a little slide and it says suggest and edit. You can go on their listing, suggest and edit, tell Google, basically tattletale on you're them. Like that's not their name. And Google that's what will you're doing. take them off in like 24 Using hours. Using a keyword. Right? So I wanted to show you both sides of that equation because we see this a lot when we're reviewing beauty professionals listings is like someone figured this out and they've been doing that for like a year and our poor clients like, gosh, yeah. I can't what? seem to beat them. We're Struggling like, well, here. Yeah. They're working the system. So, And then the last one is free SEO. This is uh, a guy that I do some work for, created a free tool online and no one does this. And the reason I bring it up is because it's free and it will help your Google My Business listing. It'll help everything you do online, including your website. You just go to this tool. It's called neilpatel.com SEO Analyzer. Neil, and you can see Neil the Patel. name up there. Mm -hmm. Neil Patel, just type in SEO Analyzer. You enter your URL. So you and don't have that, they don't have that, that slide that gives the URL. So neilpatel.com. Patel's P-A-T-E-L. It's written right there too, so Is that's it up good. There? Yeah, yeah, you can see his name, then backslash SEO dash analyzer backslash. And I'm pretty sure if you just get to neilpatel.com site, he's all about SEO and he wants to help you and get you going on that route. So you will, you will find it. Trust me, Neil it'll, will make sure. It'll give you these critical errors right here. See those little nine guys that we literally need to fix, but I probably have So you put into your, your, your URL. Yes, and then. And basically it'll we'll tell edit. you very easily, we'll very in an organized mm -hmm. manner of what you need to fix on your website. Some of it you'll be able to do yourself. Some of it you will need to hire a developer. But what I encourage you to do is just focus on all the things that you can do yourself first. Um, We've this is a lot a of people, I paid so and so and this and that, and kind of our motto is you should really be familiar and know enough before you're paying someone else to do it. You know, you, you need to know enough. You maybe don't have to be a master. Maybe there's someone else in your office that you're like, this would be good for them to do, or you have a virtual assistant. I know that's really popular, but me and Jared always feel like we have our companies and we know enough in each department know what's going on, that we know when we're taking advantage of. So if this is too overwhelming, that's okay. You're gonna know enough to then maybe get an assistant or hire, or you have someone in your office, but you can know when they're doing the work and when they're not and making sure they're down the right path. <laughs> We are gonna be around. So we're gonna stay around, answer questions. I think we're out of time. And we're gonna be walking the floor area. So if you need anything, please just holler at us. Thanks so much, everyone. Guys, thank you so much. Um, that was a lot of good information. Um, really quickly, does anybody have a question? If not, they'll be around, but just wanted to ask the crowd. Anybody have a question? We good? All right. Thanks, guys. Oh, oh, we do. One question over here.
Which one is more important, a Google review or a Yelp review? Um, do you know where you get more clients from? Google? Yeah. There you go. I mean, that's what I would say. And, and they do get a lot more traffic than Yelp. But if I was restarting our service-based business over again, I'd probably focus on Google, Yelp, Facebook for reviews. That's what I would do. And I'd just really put all my emphasis into Google first. I mean, oftentimes when you generate a review on one of them, it's that much easier to have that person just, hey, I saw you left me that awesome Google review. Would you mind doing another one on Yelp? You know, and, and that actually works pretty well because you're sort of dealing with someone who's familiar with the process. And you can incentivize them too. I mean, Elena's got some great incentivization offers to get people to leave reviews. We have like a full talk we could give about that. Free products or samples or a discount or there something. there are people that are more than happy, but it's nice to reward those people for reviews. Yeah. You're not bribing them, but you're giving them a thank you basically. Five them for their nice review. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right.